Hey, Ricky, uh, transition defense has been a, an issue for, for you guys most of the season here. How how do you think, and maybe it's tougher against a team like the Lakers, but what are the biggest things that need to change in terms of improving that aspect of your game? Uh, yeah, I mean, against the Lakers, they're one of the best, if not the best team doing it. But, of course, uh, we got to know the rules. And when the shot goes up is when star the – transition defense and there's going to be at least two or three guys back um i think we're not doing a good job in that we were, we were coming off the break i think we had like a really good three games on uh defensive and but tonight we took a step back and we just have to regroup um get better and and and, and of course that area is one of the ones that uh tonight hurt us the most uh, Coach Finch was saying, you know, when you miss a layup in the NBA because you have guys that are around the basket and maybe guys that have, have spotted up in the corner for threes, it's almost like a turnover when you miss a layup. Um, how do you how do you maybe strike that balance of trying to have guys back to cover in transition, but also trying to get optimal shots? Uh, yeah, it's, I, I mean, shot selection is really important. and It, it can hurt your defense, that's for sure. Uh, of course, a layup. Uh, we're supposed to make it, but uh, at the end of the day, if you miss it or make it, uh, there's a lot of teams that take the ball out real quick, and we got to know where to be to really get back on defense. Uh, corners got to spring back um, and don't crash the ball, especially from the top uh, on a layup situation. So uh, we got to be on the same page, all five out there, on, and do a better job. Go ahead, John. Ricky, uh, Coach Finch was saying that he liked the offense in the first half, the way that you guys were attacking, but thought that maybe in the second half, maybe a few too many jumpers um, and, and didn't attack quite as much. Did you feel that out there or when that happens, how do you guys kind of try and rediscover the aggressiveness going to the basket? Yeah, I think the first half we really played really good. I think the paint was open. Uh, we made some threes too as well. Uh, them playing in a back-to-back, -back, of course, I think that affect on that area. And then in the second half, they just uh, fix some things. Uh, they play better defense, uh, switching a lot of a lot of pick and rolls where we couldn't go downhill. Um, and yeah, when a young team like we are are tired, uh, bad habits kick in, and one of them is 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 that uh, you settle for a jumper or. Uh, pull up three instead of just attacking to the rim, and uh, and that's why experience in this league is so important. You see the Lakers that know uh, their championship team, and uh, they know in the fourth quarter everything has to be perfect, and they get better as the game goes on, and the fatigue kicks in, and and, and they got even better. Uh, we got to learn from that. Ricky, are you are you find? Do you think you're finding your rhythm now here in these last I don't know week two weeks? Um, it just seems like, you know, whether it's just the, your over, overall game seems to be going pretty strong right now. Do you feel pretty good in that area? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I found it and uh, for a lot of reasons, but uh, of course, consistent minutes and on, on a consistent uh, lineup, me better in a better shape. Uh, that's a lot. Uh, a lot keys to play in, in my game, more confidence and, and I'm feeling feeling good. I mean, it's, it's been the trend of my career as well too. Uh, uh, second half of the season play better, but um, I think with everything that had happened, especially with the trade and all the stuff, I, I was kind of lost in the beginning, but now I found myself again. Chase, go ahead. Hey Ricky, Coach Finch talked about how, you know, he's always wanted to coach you in his career since he's watched you since you were 16 and it's very complimentary. I was just wondering, how is that relationship with him? It's been a couple of weeks now. How has that relationship maybe grown or how is it going, that process of getting to know one another? Well, it's good, but when you have uh, so much in, in your plate, it's hard to really uh, pick something out of there. And uh, I don't want to put more food <laughs> in his plate in that area. But yeah, we had a nice talk talking about uh, when he coached the national team uh, from England that he had a couple of players that uh, played with me back home in Barcelona. And... Um, and it was it was good to to remember that, uh, and it's it's building. Uh, he trusts me. I think out there in the core, I, I call some plays that 
he actually was going to call right away or call a place that uh, are working and we're running again. But of course, I don't think we had the, the time enough to build that relationship, especially with practices where you can like really uh, go and peek and, and, and not discuss, but uh, go through a lot of stuff because if you do it on the game, it's hard because there is no like uh, corrections out there. Uh, you can watch it on, on film, but it's not the same as practice. And, uh, and, and, and especially for, for a point of knowing what your coach wants, I think I'm starting to pick it up. Uh, but um, like I said, it's a, it's a lot. <laughs> you, you talked about how, you know, the consistent lineups help. And Josh even said pregame that he feels like this group is gelling, this group of guys you have right now. But like, you know, you guys are going to have people come back. There's obviously the trade deadline. Like, how do you handle, how do you try to maintain any continuity when you know there are going to be guys in and out of the lineup again? Uh, just adapt to the situation as we have been doing all season long. And and at the end of the day, we, we professionals, of course, we want to have our, uh, like I said, from the beginning, our roles and all the stuff. But uh, there is there is a gap out there where things can change. Uh, when a man goes down, is a whole team to step up. Um, without Dilo, without Malik Beasley, we know that when they come back, there's going to be a lot of shots uh, for them, and and some of us going to take less shots, and we're going to see how that plays out. And and of course, minutes uh, going to change too. Um, so we just have to adapt. Trade deadline is always like two or like not a week away so yeah we, we will see what happened but uh, i think um yeah especially after the all-star break we're playing better uh as a team thanks we'll do a couple more dane go ahead ricky you're in a an extended kind of 15 20 game stretch here where you're making like 40 percent of your threes and that that's happened at other periods of time in your career and i'm is there anything that you can kind of like pin down where you can feel the difference or, or what makes that has made that change for you, whether it be now or at other times in your career where the, a reason why the shot is, is falling uh, at a really high clip. Uh, yeah. Since early in my career, I've been working on that and always been a little inconsistent, but I think I, I picked it up the last three, three seasons where I go stretch, especially in the second half of the season, where I feel like really good out there uh, from three. Um, I think it's rhythm. I think it's uh, finding when and how to shoot in the system of the team, um, knowing when to be aggressive, especially for a point guard uh, that likes to like really organize everybody. Sometimes I get lost out there, uh, not thinking about my shot, and then I take it when it's either too late or, or, or not in the rhythm. But now I feel like I'm, I'm in a rhythm all, on the system and on the fly where I feel confident enough to shoot the ball and, uh, in a high clip. We'll go Leonardo. Ricky, te saluda Leonardo Torres de Perú. Ricky, tengo dos consultas para ti. La primera, hoy jugaste un gran partido, quizás tu mejor partido de la temporada. Quisiera saber cómo te sentiste hoy. Y la segunda tiene que ver sobre las Olimpiadas de Tokio. ¿Has confirmado tu presencia para el evento? Sí, hoy fue uno de los mejores partidos, sin duda. Muy contento de, de poder estar a este nivel. Últimamente me estoy sintiendo mucho más cómodo con el, con el equipo, con el sistema. Eh, y, y bueno, eso se refleja en las estadísticas, pero también en las sensaciones. ¿no? Y espero que, que esto siga. Y después lo de Tokio, bueno, con la que está cayendo y con lo que estamos viviendo, es muy difícil eh, saber cómo... Eh, planear eh, y qué va a pasar ¿no? eh, si finalmente hay olimpiadas que creo que sí eh, cómo van a ser también eh, si va a haber burbuja o no Yo, antes de decir que sí a cualquier cosa claro que me gustaría estar pero hasta que no sepa las condiciones y cómo se va a jugar todo y cómo está siendo todo lo que está pasando en este momento es difícil You understand everything, right? Your answers to him are way longer than your answers to us. Come on now. It's it's easier. It's easier. To <laughs> I know you. Th I know you think that these are. I mean, we hear what you're saying, Ricky, and it, we see how crazy it is. I mean, you're not getting away with it. We'll go last question to David. Hola, Ricky, para la agencia F de España. Eh, me gustaría que andaras un poquito más en las estaciones. Decías que te sientes un poco mejor, que el ritmo 
que en el ambiente un poquito, no sé si puedes comentar un poquito qué ha hecho que en los últimos 3-4 partidos estés más cómodo y sobre todo más inspirado, ¿no? Sí, ya no creo que sea en los últimos tres, ya, ya va siendo dos o tres semanas donde estoy sintiendo muy cómodo. Al principio pues fue todo un shock, ¿no? desde el traspaso hasta eh, un nuevo sistema, salir del banquillo, el COVID con unas situaciones muy extrañas donde jugábamos sin público, eh, mascarillas, no poder incluso comer en el vestuario. Son pequeñas cosas que, que han ido afectando un poco a mi rutina, también llegar un poco no diría fuera de forma, pero al, al estar entrenando sin saber qué fecha exactamente iba a volver, eh, no fue mi mejor planificación eh, para llegar a la temporada, sin duda, pero tampoco quiero poner muchas excusas, ¿no? Es, es, todo el mundo le pasó lo mismo, pero yo en especial soy un poco de, de rutinas y, y se me rompieron todas las rutinas con todo lo que pasó, ¿no? Y yo creo que ahora con también eh, unos minutos adaptados saliendo de titular me ayuda muchísimo más a, a que he estado toda mi carrera así, y, y va volviendo mi juego, ¿no? Creo que estoy sintiéndome muy bien, muy cómodo y, y espero que esto siga, ¿no?